Fei Pinying Jiang. Chapter 76 The End, 2 On February 6, Qi Yunruo roused at the fourth watch. Seven to eight servant girls approached and helped him put on a set of crimson ceremonial robes with golden embroidery. Drowsy-eyed, Qi Yunruo spread out his arms, allowing them freedom to work. Lulan carried to him a bowl of sticky rice balls containing meat. Master, eat some of this. This slave has heard that your honored self will need to wait until the evening before eating more of anything. Taking a seat, Qi Yunruo extended his feet for the servants to put on his boots. He opened his mouth and ate a couple of those sticky rice balls. Then he shook his head to indicate that he didn't want any more. Today was the day he and Li Chen's wedding would occur. Universal rejoicing as far as the eye could see. Everyone who appeared in front of him wore smiles, yet he was strangely distracted. This was. Today, he and the prince know, the emperor were getting married. His ceremonial robe took eighteen seamstresses one and a half months in a rush to make. It was complicated and graceful, yet when he stood up to examine it, he only found it very heavy. After he put on a nine dragons and four phoenixes crown that had been altered for a man to wear, dawn had already arrived. The servant girls withdrew. Then the minister of rights came over and said, Lord of the rear, your honored self should leave now. Chi Yunruo nodded. The main doors of Ink Lotus Courtyard opened. The male servants and servant girls all knelt down, crying out Long live the Empress! To which Qi Yunruo waved. He stepped onto the red carpet, making his way along it one step at a time. Those of ancient times believed that the wife of an emperor must not be called a wife, as the character for wife, was homonymous with the character for to be even with. In this world, no one could stand on equal standing with the emperor. Thus, the character, for rear or back, was added to Qi Yunruo's title. After he had been conferred the position of empress, Li Chen issued out an order to change Qi Yunruo's address from Niang Niang to Lord. Li Chen's imperial concubines remained in the crown prince estate and other than the dowager consorts, there were no other masters in the palace that could use the address of Niang Niang. Once Li Chen finished offering sacrifices to his ancestors, he made for the Palace of Merciful Peace to kowtow to the Grand Empress Dowager. Today, Grand Empress Dowager Lan wore formal attire. After he rose back to his feet, she called him to her side for a seat. I heard you will leave the palace and personally fetch your new spouse from the Crown Prince estate. Li Chen nodded. Our great state of Kong has never had an emperor who personally fetched his new spouse. Smiling, Li Chen said, Grandmother, just treat it as me really wanting to go. A faint sigh escaped the Grand Empress Dowager's lips. Her expression proved complicated. My grandson, I know you like him. In the past, I never expected you to do something emperors throughout all ages have never done before. I've thought about it already. After you bring Chi Yutsa to the palace, I will cover for you. Grandmother, said Li Chen in a serious manner. For all of little key life, he had never been able to walk with his head held high in public. Ever since he was born, he had never been openly recognized by anyone. I don't want to wrong him anymore. In front of everyone in the world, I want to hand him everything he never had. M.M. M.M. The Grand Empress Dowager nodded, the look in her eyes gentle. I understand. My grandson, don't worry. A.I., just know that when you said you were going to fetch your spouse from the Crown Prince estate, I didn't get a chance to react yet. How are you going to handle Count Ziang's estate? With indifference, Li Chen replied, Little Chi has long since had no relationship with them. Grand Empress Dowager Lan did not continue speaking, lightly pushing Li Chen. He rose to his feet, then kowtowed once more toward her. Grandmother, after my wedding, I'd like to send an imperial decree summoning eldest sister home to visit her family. Yaur, Grand Empress Dowager Lan's eyes glistened with tears. Grandson will take my leave, Grandmother. M.M. Live your days well from now on. She wiped away her tears as she watched him. 
Li Chen indeed was the first emperor who ever fetched his spouse in person. There were not many idle people in the capital. When Li Chen reached the crown prince estate on horse, Qi Yunruo had just walked to the front doors with a crowd of servants accompanying him and was right about to board the carriage. The moment he heard the sound of the horse, he saw Li Chen approach from afar and he could not help but smile. Their ceremonial robes matched well. However, a dragon was embroidered onto Li Chen's whereas Qi Yunruo's had, apart from a phoenix, all kinds of trees and flowers that typically represented the empress. Moreover, his clothes had an imposing essence, and did not carry the slightest trace of gorgeous femininity. The wedding attire of the empress followed the customs of many years past. It represented the other most noble person apart from the emperor in the country. Li Chen looked at Qi Yunruo. In a flash, Qi Yunruo returned to six years in the past. However, the one who had come to fetch the bride at Count Xiang's estate hadn't been Li Chen, and Qi Yunruo's carriage had been among Qi Nikan's dowry. Li Yisu did not allow him to lift open the curtain, so that no one could see him. As such, people had been unaware that within sat a young man. Li Chen dismounted his steed and made his way toward Qi Yunruo. This man had truly given him everything. Six years ago, when he had left Count Xiang's estate, his life's trajectory changed. Li Chen reached out, and Qi Yunruo placed his hand on his. The two did not say a word. Following that, Li Chen jumped on his steed and pulled Qi Yunruo up behind him and he wrapped his arms around Li Chen's waist. hi -ah. In the past, Li Chen had wondered about this. Did the previous emperor ever have feelings for Empress Zhou? She had been the daughter of his teacher, dignified and beautiful. Back then, the Zhou family had not been as influential as the Yuan family, yet the previous emperor had established Empress Zhou as the empress and not Miss Yuan in the end. It was thus clear that he held affection for her. After the previous emperor had married Empress Zhou, he instigated her from the shadows to seize power from Empress Dowager Lan. They grew more and more hostile toward one another, emotions finally exploding because of Li Chen. In the end, in order to mend the relationship between her grandson and Empress Zhou, Empress Dowager Lan shut the doors to the Palace of Merciful Peace. But did the previous emperor have feelings for Miss Yuan? She was a woman in forties, yet no matter how much the previous emperor had doted on the younger imperial concubines, he would never neglect her, pampering her year after year. It made Miss Yuan and her son all the more unable to see their position. If it weren't for Prince Qing getting back on the right path, giving him and his mother a way out, the current Miss Yuan would not live so peacefully in the palace as a dowager noble imperial consort. The previous emperor had reigned for fifty years and had countless women. After Li Chen had ascended the throne, he sent the younger imperial concubines out of the palace. At that time, the sobs from the imperial harem shook the skies. A few days ago, the previous emperor had still been doting on them. They had still been dreaming the beautiful dream of relying on their sons for honor and glory. Li Chen felt numb as he watched them depart in droves. Those young ladies in their teens would spend the rest of their days in austerity, reciting Buddhist scriptures. Such was the power of an emperor. Countless people yearned to obtain it. It was to the point where he need not open his mouth, yet riches and women would flock his way. If he said a word, those who shouldn't appear before him would disappear in a puff of smoke. Li Chen found such a power too cold, cold enough to pierce bone. Like a person alone on a towering mountain, facing burst after burst of chilling wind. The moment he was not paying attention, he would be blown over the lofty precipice. Qi Yunruo's arms wrapped around his waist the hold awfully feeble. Yet, it seemed to give him boundless strength. Ever since then, he could take root on that cliff and stand there steadily. Ever since then, he need not worry about falling. If little Chi had not appeared, how would he be right now? Perhaps Chi Nikan would not have died. Perhaps she would have birthed him a legitimate son. With him suppressing them, Consort Chi and Consort Wei would not be able to make any waves. Afterward, he would have even more women. Every few years, 
there would be an unending stream of them coming from all over the country. They would give birth to numerous children, and after said children matured, they would struggle for power with no end. Would he watch them at the side with the cool eye of a bystander? Li Chen smiled. If it weren't for little Qi, he probably would have died in the northwest. The wedding of the emperor was a grand affair. Li Chen hurried his steed, and Qi Yunruo smiled behind him. Your majesty need not rush. It's still early. Pulling the reins so that his horse would slow to a stop, Li Chen suddenly changed direction. Hold steady. Such an action startled his retinue of officials, and one after the other they said, Your Majesty, where is your honored self heading? Your Majesty. Qi Yunruo knew what he wanted to do. He buried his head in Li Chen's back and burst out laughing. The hem of his red and embroidered clothes whipped in the wind. Li Chen rode his horse out of the city walls. And Qi Yunruo tilted his body to take in the scenery from both sides. The commoners outside the city watched them, stunned. A good moment later, those people fell to a kneel on the ground, lifting their heads one by one to watch the young new emperor of Great Kong speed by on his steed with his empress. Come midday, Li Chen took his time bringing Qi Yunruo to the imperial palace's gate of supreme harmony. Qi Yunruo raised his head and took in the gigantic name plaque. He felt Li Chen's hold on his hand grow tighter, so he turned to him and smiled. Together, they crossed over that boundary. During the two times Qi Yunruo had entered the palace and met the previous emperor in the past, he had not gone through here. Ever since Li Chen had become the emperor, Qi Yunruo had not come to the palace. After they entered the palace together, Qi Yunruo sat on a sedan as it took them to their destination. They would perform a full ceremony of paying respects in Zikin Palace, bow three times and kowtow nine times to the Grand Empress Dowager, then officially become husband and husband at last. Sitting in the seat of honor, Grand Empress Dowager Lan said in a gentle tone, hurry and stand. Li Chen and Qi Yunruo rose. Then she beckoned Qi Yunruo over, gazing at him. Recalling the Li Yao who had remained in the northwest, he understood intuitively what the Grand Empress Dowager wanted. Grandmother, he said. Her smile grew ever more gentle as she beckoned once more. The older female servant by her side presented a tray, and Grand Empress Dowager Lan personally picked up the item lying on it and handed it over to Qi Yunruo. I'm old. With you taking care of things, I can live my life in ease and comfort. Qi Yunruo looked at the phoenix seal held in his hands. Then he nodded. Grandmother, I will not let down your expectations. After the many elements of the meticulous and complicated protocol concluded, Qi Yunruo sat on the emperor's bed situated in the resting wing of Zikin Palace, waiting for the palace banquet to end. In the past, after an empress went through her coronation, she would wait in the palace of bright sun for the emperor. However, Li Chen held their wedding in Zikin Palace, which was dedicated exclusively for the emperor himself. Come noon, after Li Chen and Qi Yunruo had received the customary deference of numerous officials, the palace banquet started. After some rounds of drinks, the palace servants had slowly led Qi Yunruo to where he currently was. He had told Li Chen in advance that he truly did not want to remain until the conclusion of the banquet. Although Li Chen had not known his reason, he still let Qi Yunruo do as he pleased. As he waited, palace maids stood by on both sides of him. Qi Yunruo looked all around, recalling that Li Chen had lived here alone for a month and he could not help but stand up, curious. Lord of the Rear. I'm going for a walk, he said, smiling. You don't have to follow. Understood. Zikin Palace was the third largest residence in the Imperial Palace. It was lofty and towering. The palace wing in the front was where the emperor handled official business, to the back was the wing with the resting quarters. Zikin Palace stood more elevated than other palaces, and from here, one could see the palaces from every direction, could see everything. Li Chen had lived in Zikin Palace for a month, yet did not change much of anything there. He merely altered some things to resemble his crown prince estate. 
Qi Yunruo's personal articles had been delivered yesterday and Li Chen had left them here, not sending them to another palace residence. So, Qi Yunruo found the twelve zodiac ornaments made of colored glass that Li Chen had gifted him some years back and some books that he had recently started reading. At nightfall, Li Chen returned to Zikin Palace, the sound of his arrival echoing throughout. Qi Yunruo's eyes darted, before he shot a glance at Lulan. Understanding his intention, she placed a red muslin veil over his head. When Li Chen entered the room, he fell into a daze but he understood what was happening in no time at all. He smiled as he said, Is this why you left early? Qi Yunruo replied, We already changed so much of the protocol that what remained wasn't much. So, we should keep this. All right. Li Chen took a seat by his side. The palace maids brought over the nuptial wine. Qi Yunruo and Li Chen had half a ladle's worth each and Li Chen took note of Qi Yunruo looking him up and down. He said, just now at the banquet, I did not have even one sip of wine. It was then that Qi Yunruo nodded, draining the half ladle of wine in one gulp. They did not eat posterity dumplings. They also did not place lotus seeds, dried water lily petals, and red dates on the mattress. Li Chen waved to dismiss the servants. Curiously, he asked, why are you wearing a veil? Originally, he thought little Chi would not be fond of people treating him as a woman, of having to follow female rules and etiquette. Because I don't want you to be able to see me the moment you come in. Why? No reason. Li Chen gazed at Chi Yunruo and Chi Yunruo returned his gaze through the red veil. At last, Li Chen reached out and lifted the veil. Under the flickering candlelight, a light flashed through Qi Yunruo's eyes. Following that, Li Chen reached out once more, cradling the back of Qi Yunruo's head, bringing his face closer to his own. The two shared a kiss. Qi Yunruo closed his eyes. The events of the past appeared one after the other before him. On the watery veranda, he had merely caught a glance by coincidence. The first time he had seriously gotten a good look at Li Chen was during the latter's wedding, right outside of Winter Plum Courtyard. Qi Yunruo had opened the window and caught sight of his back. Never had he expected that Li Chen would suddenly turn around. The next time he saw him again, it was the next day. Li Yisu had told him to wait upon the prince, for the princess consort had awoken. He knelt before Li Chen. Li Chen told him to raise his head. He recalled the fragrance of Osmanthus flowers all around. At Ji Huan's, he had drunk wine. Then he fell asleep in a cluster of flowers. Who would have thought that when he roused, he would catch sight of the prince? The prince gazed at him without a word, still as rock. Qi Yunruo said he was lost, and the prince supported him to a stand and pointed toward the direction of Winter Plum Courtyard. He recalled when Chi Nikon hinted that he should serve the prince. At that time, he thought of his mother and could not stop the tears from flowing down his face. The prince had sat at his side, telling him to rest well. He recalled a time when it snowed, when he trailed after the prince and for the first time, the prince mentioned to him his ambition. He recalled the evening of the day he had gone to the human market. Chi Yunruo had stayed in Ink Lotus Courtyard. Because the prince seemed angry, he felt panic but in bed, the prince caressed his cheek in a gentle manner, his expression gradually relaxing. The bed curtains were thick and heavy, layer by layer concealing the candlelight outside them. Although Chi Yunruo had felt embarrassed, he remembered the scene of that day in vivid detail. The temperature of the prince's body. He recalled the cry of the bugle horn in the northwest. Recalled the way back to the capital how he had concealed his strength and bided his time for half a year. How, before dawn, the sound of urgent footsteps and knocking on the door had rung out. If I had never met him, how would I be right now? Chi Yunruo did not know that Li Chen had also thought of this today. Did not know that Li Chen was just as happy as him about how things had gone. The heavens were compassionate toward them, allowing them to meet in this vast world of people. Little Chi. M.M. Li Chen nuzzled Qi Yunruo's face with his own. 
he pulled him up by the hand and led him out of the room. Following his gaze, Chi Yunruo looked up at the sky where gorgeous fireworks were blooming. High up on Zikin Palace, there were only Li Chen and him present. For my whole life, I may let down many people, said Li Chen. When we met, I already had a wife and many concubines and children. But from now on, all my love will be given to you. Little Chi, Li Chen stared at him. I have never regretted it, said Chi Yunruo, a smile on his lips. The largest bloom of a firework was above. Chi Yunruo raised his head. He watched the sky that seemed as bright as if it were daylight. He looked at the man by his side and thought in silence, in the end, the heavens haven't treated me too poorly. He leaned against Li Chen and he reached out to embrace him. They would be together. Until death did them apart. End of the main story. Fei Pinying Jiang Chapter 77 Extra, The Princess Returns On the day Royal Princess Changping returned to the capital, the whole capital bustled with excitement. Waiting for the princess carriage to arrive at Zhengyang Gate, the commoners cried out Long live the princess simultaneously. As an emissary, Qi Yunruo personally greeted her. Li Yao lifted the carriage curtain and saw Empress Qi in front of the carriage and could not help but laugh. Princess, said Qi Yunruo, riding a horse over. His Majesty originally wanted to greet you in person but something suddenly happened in the palace. So His Majesty sent me instead. Worried, Li Yao said, what has happened in the palace? Don't worry. It's not pressing. Her gaze fell upon Qi Yunruo. He was already an empress, but was still as humble in front of her as he had been back in the northwest. She could not help but say, Lord of the rear, you don't need to do this. Qi Yunruo shook his head. Apart from the Grand Empress Dowager, Princess Changping was the person the emperor respected the most. She was naturally worth Qi Yunruo's love and respect. It had nothing to do with the hierarchical ranking of superior and subordinate. Qi Yunruo noticed a young boy behind her. He beckoned to him. Prince Ayun, do you want to ride horses with me? Ayun resembled his mother with his fair skin and delicate features. Other than his eyes, which were a pretty amber, he didn't appear any different from a Han child. His attire was that of the Qiang, clothes made of leather paired with boots with his hair tied into many braids. He seemed shy and timid. Li Yao warmly said, Ayun, this is Uncle Qi. Ayun softly said, Uncle Qi. Li Yao told Ayun to disembark from the carriage. Then Qi Yunruo carried him onto the horse. He told the boy to sit in front of him. Once the horse started to move, Ayun finally seemed excited. Ever since he had learned how to walk, his royal father taught him how to ride a horse. Now, he was already comfortable riding a small horse by himself. As Li Yao sat in the carriage, her expression shut closed and darkened along with the drop of the curtain. Occasionally she would hear rumors on the road. Within the palace, a grandmother and her grandchild met. The Grand Empress Dowager and the Royal Princess Li Yao sobbed before one another. Qi Yunruo dropped to a crouch, softly pushing Ayun to the older woman. The Grand Empress Dowager said with a kind expression, Good child, come here. Ayun obeyed. The Grand Empress Dowager caressed his little cheeks. Truly a fine and good-looking child. Qi Yunruo said, Young prince's eyes are very beautiful. Ayun looked back at him, long eyelashes fluttering. A smile graced Qi Yunruo's lips. To me, young prince looks like the emperor. Once again, the Grand Empress Dowager examined Ayun. Approvingly, she said, exactly. They say nephews resemble their uncles. Our young prince Ayun truly resembles the emperor in appearance. Li Yao noticed that although the servants in the Palace of Merciful Peace seemed very cheerful, faint wisps of melancholy wrapped around them. At this moment, the Grand Empress Dowager faced Qi Yunruo. Lord of the Rear, I will be having a chat with my granddaughter. Bring young Prince Ayun to the two princes to play. I remember that yesterday, 
the emperor instructed imperial tutor Yao not to resume classes today, right? Qi Yunruo bowed. Yes. Today the princes will have a break. I will take my leave. Jing Er and Mu Er had waited outside the Palace of Merciful Peace in excitement since early on. Apart from their reading partners, they did not have any other playmates. For the past few years, the palace did not host any banquets, nor did the sons of the nobility enter the palace. The two princes heard that their paternal aunt, who had married far away in the Qiang's lands, would be making a trip to the palace with her son in tow. So they were looking forward to it. Qi Yunruo led A Yun out, and Jing Er led Mu Er as they rushed to them. Lord of the rear, is this Prince A Yun? He called out. Yes. Qi Yun Ruo released A Yun's hand, lightly pushing him to the two princes' side, but A Yun was unwilling to be pulled to Jing Er, hiding behind Qi Yun Ruo. Despite this, Jing Er said in a warm tone, "Young prince, I am your older cousin. Are you hungry? I'll bring you somewhere to eat." I'll take you to the military drill ground," said Muir, aware that the Qiang were skilled at shooting and riding. A Yun peeked his head from behind Qi Yun Ruo. He blinked his large eyes as he looked at his older cousins. Jing Er tried to hold his hand and pull him along again. A Yun hesitated, looking at Qi Yun Ruo. To which Qi Yun Ruo smiled. What does young Prince A Yun like? We prepared many things that the Qiang eat. You can also try our great king's dishes. If you don't want to stay indoors all day, there is a very large field for riding in the palace. You can request an imperial guard to bring you there to ride a horse. All right. Ayun nodded. Qi Yunruo sighed in relief. Jing Er and Mu Er each held one of Ayun's hands. They bid him farewell and left. Qi Yunruo instructed palace maids and court eunuchs to watch over the three children carefully before making his way to Zikin Palace. Li Yao, who had remained in the Palace of Merciful Peace, discovered what had occurred in the palace during her absence. For the past few years, officials continuously presented petitions to the emperor requesting that he confer Princess Consort Chun the posthumous title of Empress, in order to give proper respect to his first wife. Yet, the emperor paid no heed to these petitions. And now, there were officials presenting petitions to change the titles of second princess and third princess, from the previous emperors Shunjia and Rujia respectively to a more prestigious type such as the imperial princesses of the legitimate line. Since these two princesses were born from the emperor's legitimate wife, they ought to have special titles. Currently, the eldest princess title was Wanning. Like second and third princess titles, it was related to the behavior and moral conduct of women. As such, if the titles of second and third princess changed, eldest princess identity would become awkward to the extreme. In fact, if it were merely foolish court officials requesting this, Li Chen would not be this angry. However, second princess Li Chu had personally expressed her want for the title change to him. In Zikin Palace, Li Chen said in a low voice, Do you admit your wrongs? Chu Er stubbornly and bluntly said, I didn't do anything wrong. You didn't? Who taught you to say this? Did you forget about the rule that the rear court must not be involved in politics? Imperial Father, I did not interfere with politics. This is a matter of the rear court. Li Chen did not speak. Although the matter of changing their titles seemed unrelated to the forecourt, if he truly did this for his legitimate daughters, then their birth mother's identity could not remain as just a simple princess consort Chun. Li Chen did not believe that this was something Chu'er, a six to seven year old little girl, could think of. After Chu'er had said these words to him, he ordered for a thorough investigation of the servants by second princess side. But those people had tight lips, each of them unwilling to say anything. Li Chen loved his daughter deeply so he could not punish those faithful and true servants of hers in too severe of a degree. When Qi Yunruo entered the room, servants from both sides of him curtsied. Paying respects to Lord of the Rear. Qi Yunruo waved. He noticed that when he had arrived, Chu Er suddenly stiffened. After that, she turned her body and saluted. Paying respects to Lord of the Rear. 
Qi Yunruo smiled. Please rise, princess. Li Chen looked at him, expression growing gentle. Qi Yunruo said, the royal princess is currently chatting with Grand Empress Dowager, and Prince Ayun is playing with Jing er and Mu er. Li Chen nodded. How are the preparations for the noon meal? It's still early right now. There are still two hours until the noon meal. Royal Princess is having some light refreshments at the Palace of Merciful Peace. I also told Jing er to bring some snacks to the little prince for a taste. The servants have started preparing for the noon meal since before dawn, so don't worry. Qi Yunruo glanced at the Chu'er who had her head lowered. He sighed in his heart. Three years had already passed, yet Chu'er still could not accept her mother's death. This girl was kind-hearted, but once she made a decision, she could not turn back from it. Qi Yunruo took the initiative to say, Second princess, do you want to meet Ayun? He's your younger cousin. In a nervous manner, Chu'er looked up at Li Chen. He grunted in acknowledgement, and she asked to be excused. After she left, Li Chen sighed deeply. Qi Yunruo sat by his side, holding his hand and looking at him. Li Chen smiled. Prince Ayun resembles you a lot in appearance, said Qi Yunruo. Grand Empress Dowager also said that nephews resembled their uncles. A sigh left his lips. But he seems quiet. I don't know if he can support the Qiang lands in the future. Currently, the Qiang lands already belonged to the great state of Kong. Ever since Ayun was born, it was decided that he would be the master of that territory. All of a sudden, Qi Yunruo laughed. I heard that the Queen of Zenyuan country, our commandery Princess Zhuang Jing, is very difficult to deal with. Cheng Sijia shouldn't have any means to stir up trouble now. For Great Kong, Zenyuan country indeed resembled something of little value or interest. If they attacked Zenyuan country, they wouldn't get much of a reward. If they didn't attack them, Cheng Sijia would occasionally pop up to cause trouble before leaving. Last year, he requested to take Li Yao's maidservant, Wang Er, as his wife. Li Chen had hesitated for quite a while, yet in the end, complied with Li Yao and Wang Er's wishes and married her abroad. Wang Er was of the Han and loyal to the great state of Kong. Furthermore, the previous emperor had conferred her the position of commandery princess. Her identity was noble, so it was suitable for her to marry Cheng Sijia as his queen. Contrary to expectations, Cheng Sijia kept his hands clean. He didn't have many people left with him, so after Wang Er married over, she controlled him with an iron fist. She did not allow him to wander about any more. Cheng Sijia did as he was told, with no movements from him recently. A smile slid its way across Li Chen's lips. Then his thoughts went back to Chu Er. He was strict with his children, but loved them even more. Especially because his five children did not have their birth mothers by their sides. He was very patient with them, held very tender sentiments toward them. His youngest daughter, Ying Er, was the most vivacious out of all of his children. She lived with the Grand Empress Dowager at the Palace of Merciful Peace, giving her great grandmother much delight. As for Yan Er, his eldest daughter, her sweet temperament was already visible. Li Chen's two sons were obedient and sensible, skilled in martial arts and studying. However, his eldest legitimate daughter, Chu Er, was prejudiced, proud and aloof. It gave him a large headache, yet he didn't know what to do about it. When it was time for the noon meal, Li Yao and Li Chen sat together. Li Yao glanced at Chu Er from afar. Your Majesty, what do you think? Li Chen said candidly. I will not posthumously confer Miss Chi as Empress. Her moral conduct is insufficient as the mother of the world. Moreover, eldest sister, if I give her a posthumous title, she would become the first Empress. In the future, she would be buried with me. In a flash, realization struck Li Yao. She glanced at Chi Yunruo, who had his head lowered and was in the middle of coaxing Ayun to eat Great Kang's dishes. He was smiling eyes turning into crescents. Li Chen continued, Yan Er is my beloved daughter. In my heart, 
she's no different from my second and third daughters. If they are given the title of princesses of the legitimate line, then how could Yanner live among her sisters in the future? One would fear that she would even have a rough marriage. I love all three of my daughters equally. I won't let any of them be wronged. Li Yao shifted her gaze to Chu Er and sighed. But maybe Chu Er doesn't understand your deep consideration and instead thinks that you are wronging her by not making her a princess of the legitimate line. Li Chen grew silent. As the emperor, he could make quick decisions when it came to governing and politics but as a father, when it came to the matters concerning his children, it was difficult for him to make progress. After a moment, Li Yao smiled. Your Majesty, the reason for my return is that I have something to discuss with you. Please speak, eldest sister. Li Yao looked at Ayun. I want to look for a main consort among the Han girls for Ayun. If we bring Han girls close to his age to the Qiang's royal capital about ten years from now, they might not be able to grow used to it all of a sudden. I'd like for you to select a few suitable girls that I can bring back. Once they are older, I will choose one to be Ayun's wife. As a matter of fact, this wasn't just for her son. It was also to water down the blood of each generation of Qiang chiefs quicker. Li Chen contemplated for a short period before nodding. This is doable. We will issue the decree tomorrow. Although this would require sending young girls far away from home, the way Li Chen and Li Yao saw it, this would ensure long-term peace and stability for the great state of Kong, an action that was incredibly important. Suddenly, Li Chen looked at Chu Er. Calmly, he said, eldest sister, bring Chu Er to the northwest for a few years. Your Majesty. Li Yao cried out in alarm. The northwest is wide and spacious. I hope Chu Er can change her way of thinking. After two years, we will dispatch people to escort her back home. Slowly, Li Yao nodded. A moment later, she smiled. I will treat Chu Er well, as if she were my own daughter. I trust eldest sister. Li Chen wasn't only convinced that Li Yao could take care of Chu Er well. He also felt that his eldest sister's moral conduct could be the best influence on his daughter. In the afternoon, Li Yao hesitated on whether she should pay respects to Empress Dowager Zhou. Qi Yunruo also hesitated for a while. Her Majesty the Empress Dowager has yet to be deposed. You should go and pay respects to her. A mild smile on her lips, Li Yao nodded. Qi Yunruo took the initiative to escort her there with him leading the way but Li Yao feared that he would be embarrassed. Qi Yunruo said, These past three years, His Majesty has never gone to pay respects to the Empress Dowager. I as well. A sigh left Li Yao's lips. They are full-blooded mother and son. I don't understand why Empress Dowager treats His Majesty so ruthlessly. When I still lived in the palace, Empress Dowager treated us gently and benevolently. Yet, she treated His Majesty in a cold manner back then too. She wholeheartedly wanted Prince Yang to ascend the throne, said Qi Yunruo. Li Yao shook her head and did not say much anymore. The Palace of Bright Sun was the palace meant for the Empress. Ever since Empress Dowager Zhou had entered the palace decades ago, she lived there. When Qi Yunruo and Li Yao arrived, the palace maids on duty told them in a soft voice that the Empress Dowager was reciting Buddhist scriptures. With soft steps, Li Yao entered the room and kowtowed. Chengping pays respects to Imperial Mother. Empress Dowager Zhou acted as though she did not hear her, continuing to recite the scriptures with her eyes closed. Li Yao could only rise to her feet. Qi Yunruo stood outside the door watching them. Actually, this was the first time he was seeing Empress Dowager Zhou in three years. During Qi Yunruo's coronation, she had not left the doors of her residence, offending Li Chen. Qi Yunruo did not mention coming here to pay respects. That woman kneeling on the ground had her eyes closed, ash-colored hair held back with only a piece of cloth and a wooden hairpin. Her clothes were made of plain gray cotton, facial features serene. Come evening. Qi Yunruo stared at the Li Chen sitting by his desk in a daze. Then Li Chen dully said, You went to see Imperial Mother today? Yes. 
Li Chen did not say anything anymore. Qi Yunruo smiled. He moved a chair by his side and sat down. Li Chen was in the middle of arranging servants to serve Chu'er on her stay at the Northwest as well as older female servants and imperial guards. Do you really want to send second princess to the Northwest? Li Chen said, she's stubborn. I have no other choice. The Northwest is vast, grasslands as far as the eye can see. Growing up there is better than growing up in the deep rear palace. Since Qi Yunruo had been there before, he knew that it truly made people open-minded but he worried that Chu'er's body could not take the trip there. On the road, if she truly can't endure it, they'll have someone escort her back. It's not a big deal, said Li Chen. Qi Yunruo nodded. When he had gone to see Empress Dowager Zhou today, Qi Yunruo had been deep in thought. Back then, Countess Ziang had lost her honored lady title due to participating in Empress Dowager Zhou's attempt in dethroning the emperor and since she was not directly involved in the plot, she was able to keep her life. Last year, during the national mourning period, Count Ziang, Qi Suxiao, hosted a banquet in his estate and he was stripped of his noble rank and dismissed from office in return. The title Count Ziang had also fallen from a second-rank count to a third-rank count, with said title transferred to Qi Yunchen. Li Chen seemed to notice what he was thinking, saying all of a sudden, I remember when I was young, grandmother told me that Qi Suxiao was a talented field commander. If he had the opportunity, he might have made even more contributions than General Qi Ran. Such words startled Qi Yunruo. After thinking for a moment, he asked, Your Majesty, if the previous emperor did not seize the Qi family's military power, and the Qi army was still around, what would you do? Li Chen fell silent for a while before bluntly saying, Perhaps I would do the same as imperial father. The Qi family's army is a sharp blade but if this blade is too sharp, it can harm its master. If the previous emperor had not sent Shui Ling Long to approach Qi Suxiao, little Qi might not exist in this world. Suddenly, Li Chen's heart softened. Perhaps it took many mistakes and sorrow added together so that little Qi and he could meet. Those past events caused one to sob, to feel pained. But right now, Li Chen felt fortunate. An incorporeal hand from the heavens had played with the chessboard of fate in a fickle manner, sending little Qi before him. The young little Qi had stood on the long, long corridor by the lake in Prince Chun's estate, glancing at him from afar and it was that one glance that made them never regret what was between them. Li Chen turned his body and kissed Qi Yunruo's forehead, sincere and true. End of extra chapter